just record the video. With the release of the new iRacing car viewer, painters now have a much easier way of checking their work, refreshing textures, just overall seeing what they're doing to the car when they're editing it piece by piece. And it really did trigger something inside me that, to be fair, has wanted to make this video for a very long time. So I decided to put a little thing together and we're going to go over iRacing paints and a lot of the basics. Hopefully it simplifies it for a lot of you because I know that there's a lot of complex guides out there that just aren't easy to get a hold of. Now I want to say that straight off the back I know that trading paints and other bits of software do help you manage your paints but honestly when you try and do it manually even though learning it may be a little bit difficult it is honestly a lot easier. After running a lot of leagues, putting together paint packs, sorting out livery packs for other reasons as well, doing trailers and so on and painting cars for people. You know I've, I've done liveries on iRacing now for nearly six years and I'm by no means the most experienced painter on iRacing but there are a lot of easier ways to do it rather than relying on other software where you can't always just quickly click a button and see what you've got on your car or what's on someone else's car. Obviously the car viewer doesn't allow you to look at other people's cars but just knowing what to look for or how to check makes a very big difference. So this isn't in any way sort of me saying don't use trading paints if you're comfortable using it then that's fine but there are other ways of doing it and hopefully I'll cover some of that and simplify it as well today. And what better car to start with and show you all these different aspects of painting in iRacing but with the Kia Optima GTS an absolute heartthrob of mine uh, one of the first cars I ever raced on iRacing the first leagues I ever did and got involved in were in the Kia Optima GTS and it's got a lot of little interesting parts on it that I think will provide good examples of what we can do when you're painting these cars but the very first basic thing is your iRacing ID now if you don't know how to get your iRacing ID you just head up to your profile whether that be on your on the UI or whether it's on the website but it just has the number up here at the very top we'll go over to the livery in Photoshop here as you can see we've just got a normal everyday white Kia Optima these are the standard decals on the car now this layer is what's called a stamped layer in iRacing uh, they used to force stamp these on the cars but if you're gonna save this livery you just do control save as make sure it's a target file a TGA file these are basically files that are designed to wrap around an object and be saved as a flat image so they are not too big in terms of memory but they're the perfect way that iRacing has found to do it other sims use DDS files direct draw services which again made to wrap around cars but target files are the ones we use and we're just gonna put car underscore and then your iRacing ID and as you can see I've already got that saved. It'll ask me, do you want to replace it? Of course I do. Do that, and it's always got to be 24. 24 bits is how it gets saved. If you choose 32 or 16, it'll either just show up black or white, and you won't see anything on the livery. Don't worry about compressing it. You don't really have to. And as soon as that saves, this is one thing I've learned to love about the car viewer, it's updated. You don't have to do Control r or anything like that to refresh the livery, and it's there. Now, you can just make any changes you want to this so if I just decided to be an idiot more than normal just get a paintbrush just bang some blue all over it do the same again save it target file car underscore 172698 and BAM awful absolutely awful now in case you're unsure where to save these files as well all of the iRacing paints should be saved in documents I racing and then paint and you'll see an absolute plethora of folders dependent on how many cars you've driven only when you actually load the car up in the sim does it generate the folder inside documents and then you'll get everything in there one thing to note as well is all driver suits and helmets that you go up against whether you're using trading paints and it saves them on your PC or whether you get them in a paint pack for a series that you're running in all helmets and suits will go in there as well and another little interesting thing on top of that is that per car you can actually have helmets and suits so say you've got a guy that you know that races for a certain team but in a different series he could be representing another team and for that sin that single car you can have different helmets and things there as you'll see here in the Jetta folder obviously for the boring cars I've got Jetta suits and helmets here for the drivers so no matter what they're running elsewhere they'll always be running that in that car and it's interesting how few people know that actually 
Now on top of this comes decal layers. Now all championships all over the world you'll see have a title sponsor or a set of stickers that have to go on the car. An example here on the Kia we have the Pirelli logos on the arches, all of this sort of stuff down the side skirts as well and mainly the number boards. Now number boards on road cars tend to be a mandatory thing especially in my head I'm an absolute stickler for them but they sort of identify what the series is and what it's got. Obviously we've got the main series sponsor and then sometimes what class a car is in as well that go on these number boards. But what if you're running a series and you want it to stand out from the usual iRacing stuff and you don't want their number boards, you maybe want to put some number plates or something on it. Well, you would make your own. So what people tend to do is they would take the paint file like this, get rid of everything else and make a note of where these number blocks are which is where iRacing stamps the standard numbers on the car. They would then make it a transparent file, so think of it as like a clear film with just some little opaque parts on it, and then this would be sort of layered over the top of it. So if we save this now as car underscore decal, and then our iRacing ID, same again, 24 bits per pixel on the targa options, you will see that you then get your own number boards, and if placed correctly, they look pretty good. It's nice and tidy. You've got the, the series broadcaster Apex Racing TV in the corner there as well. And then we also have um, little identifiers for what class the drivers were in. And it just makes it stand out from the usual iRacing stuff. Now, what it's done here, the reason it's painted the car white is just that basically Photoshop doesn't support the transparency on target files, or at least I've not found a way for it to do that yet. But you can see there that you can make it your very own series very quickly. One thing to note is on some of these cars you can't actually change a certain bit such as the windscreen banner on this Kia. You cannot paint it all. You get stuck with this horrible, ugly, privacy star Pirelli banner thing. But at the end of the day, iRacing had the agreement with the championship at the time to scan the car so we're stuck with it I'm afraid. As mentioned, Photoshop doesn't support the transparency of Targa files. So what the best thing you can do is, is save the decal layer as a PNG. That way you still get the transparency. Open it in a program like Paint.net or even GIMP as well, which a lot of painters use in iRacing. And then you just want to save it as another target file, as car, decal, and then your iRacing ID. Make sure that you choose 32-bit and compression on this. Doesn't make a difference if you do that in Photoshop, trust me, I've tried. But these programs usually sort it out. Save that in there, and before you know it, no solid white cars for you. One thing you'll notice is that you've still got these stickers in the background, which are the iRacing standard stamped stickers. Now, what it used to do was it would remove them as soon as it detected a decal layer over the top, but now it doesn't do that. A lot of the time, you can just find these standard stickers in the Comtigs or Car Parts layer within Photoshop. Just need to remove that, or you can cut them out yourself, do whatever you want to do with it, so long as you make sure it doesn't look messy with the number boards over the top. Resave the livery, of course, and then we should have a nice, tidy BSR decal layer with, of course, our livery underneath. Now, on top of this, rather than having those standard stamped numbers, there is a way to put your own numbers on the car, your own fonts, your own everything. It just gets rid of the standard stamped numbers completely. It's a little bit more complex, but we are going to go into that now, just in case you want to give your series that little bit more of an identifier. Now these are what's lovingly known as a car num file, which is a car number file. So these standard stamped numbers that we get on iRacing that it does depend on your I rating in a session or your chosen number in a league, they don't have to be there. It does sometimes take some different decals with it. For example, you would sometimes see something like the Pirelli logo or something on the windscreen banner get taken. But if you save this as car underscore num, for num and then your iRacing ID what the sim will do is it will look for a livery that basically replaces iRacing stamp numbers if it can't find one it'll still use a normal one and put the numbers on for you but this is one where it picks it up and says oh this person's put their own numbers on this car so we don't have to do any of that and as you can see no numbers on the car anywhere we still have the decal layer over the top obviously which we will remove car decal gone and then all of a sudden it's already updated and now what we'll do is we'll put our own number boards on it so I've made these number boards just as a bit of a generic test scale them down a little bit 
pop that on the side simple as that the i racing numbers had them a bit further back just before the door panel gap but now because of this new type if Chaz saves it as the right thing <laughs> we can put the numbers wherever we want and have them in whatever font whatever color whatever style that we like so it really gives you the customization if you're running your own series obviously one thing to bear in mind with this is the fact that if you are running your own series and you want to use the, your own numbers and your own custom style for it is that you will have to go into every single paint to make sure that the numbers all get put on by either yourself or your series admins it's a lot of work we did it for the world gt championship a few seasons ago we manually put the decal layer over everybody's liveries yes it's a lot of work but if you get it right it looks very very good indeed now if you're applying these car number liveries to your machines and they're not showing up all you need to do is go into the iRacing sim as we are here click in options in the top right go down to graphics and then in the bottom right corner you'll see a little option that you can tick called hide car numbers this will automatically refresh the paints and as mentioned before it will look for any paints that are named car underscore num underscore id and if it can't find one it'll use a standard paint and put the numbers on itself you can just untick this again if you don't want liveries of that kind to show up and when it comes to painting the cars that's pretty much all there is to it so to very quickly recap you have car underscore and then your id as a standard paint with the iRacing stamped numbers over the top you can apply your own decal layers with your livery underneath it and still have the standard iRacing numbers as well and of course you can also apply your own numbers too and your own number boards and whatever else just to really customize the look of the car while also giving your own series its little bit of definition from any others that you see on the sim i hope this information on iRacing paints has helped and of course if you do have any other questions pop them down in the comments below and i'll be happy to try and answer them but what i'm going to do is make another video on spec maps as well which really does deserve its own video it's a complete minefield of other little details and bits of information what i'll do is i'll pop a link to that in the description below once that gets made and hopefully i'll see you there